everyone and welcome back to another Star Trek the official Starships collection issue review from Eagle Moss. This is issue 103. We have the Vidian warship from Star Trek Voyager. So we have quite a decent size and I know there was quite a bit of buzz you know curiosity around this model uh, upon its release. So I'm looking forward to actually getting my hands on it. Um, nice to see another Delta Quadrant species uh, being approached here. Um, let's see if it's successful or not. So let's put the model to one side and let's have a look at this magazine, shall we? So here we have the front cover of the Vidian warship. So nice graphic, uh, interesting design, um, quite, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's quite different. Um, some similar elements. Um, in design, but again, you know, that is the language of Star Trek. So we have type is warship, operational 2370s, length 300 meters, max speed warp 9.6. So she's a mover. I always kind of like the Vidians, you know, almost kind of like vampires, you know, and zombies and stuff like that as well, with their backstory. Ever so interesting. So we have our four sections, Vidian warship, uh, we have designing the ship, uh, Vidian makeup, and on-screen appearances. So additional information here. Um, again, location Delta Quadrant, yeah. Particle beam emitters and torpedo launchers with a couple of additional close-up images here as well. So that's that same graphic, just with a kind of nebula, star field, uh, kind of stock image from behind. And uh, yeah, only a face a mother could love. So Vidians who suffered from the phage had alien skin grafted onto their own, uh, giving them a hideous appearance. The disease also affected their organs and in order to prolong their lives, they harvested body parts from other species. They preferred to use corpses, but they would take organs from living bodies if necessary. Oh, how creepy. Creepy is that. Didn't I tell you about their backstory? <laughs> so here we have some additional shots. So you can kind of see the sense of scale uh, from Voyager to the Vidian warship um, again just some other action shots and uh, yeah they caused a bit of a headache for the Voyager crew from time to time so um, as you see here another Vidian ship larger than uh, their warship used hyperthermic charges to disarm Voyager oh yeah sorry misunderstanding yeah that's a different style of ship but again it's a larger version of their warship uh, before using grapplers to bore holes into the hull. Um, yeah, so very aggressive way to board ships. But um, yeah, very um, motivated species to say the least. Um, so what do we have here in the ship profile? So main bridge, yeah, I would have assumed that. Deflector array, four particle emitters. Um, support pylons. So again, obviously these engines may have kind of you know had an extra stress on the body so again putting in the support pylons but i like the kind of different angles that they have here it just gives it a little bit of dynamic feel to it uh the government of vidian society was known as the vidian solidality um one of the most important people in their administration was sulan who was chief surgeon of course you're going to have medical <laughs> be the top uh, in 2371, he used a device known as a uh, genotron to extract DNA from Blanatores. He then produced a full Klingon version of her, as he believed Klingon, Klingon DNA was resistant to the phage and might help uh, provide a cure. So again, a lot of tools there to uh, really add some nice flavour to the story arcs. So here we have the designing of the ship. So we have actual practical model here. You can see a lot of the paint detailing. Some of the detailing around, um, I don't know what that would be per se. Deflector, additional deflector maybe. Um, so yeah, visual effects producer Dan Curry came up with the rescue, came to the rescue even, uh, when he designed the new Vidian starship that uh, was needed to create in a hurry. We've often heard these stories, we need a ship in a hurry, get it done. And um, again, fair play to the likes of Dan Curry, you know, Rob Onshu, a lot of the... Um, people involved in making Star Trek a reality. They put in the extra hours, they put in the, the, the dedication to bring these things to life for us. So, um, you know, looking back, thank you very much. 
So um, we have a little profile on the ship. Um, the impressive studio model of the Vidian warship was built for Star Trek Voyager's second season episode, Resolutions. And it also appeared in season three's um, Coda episode. The open winged ship featured fully functioning lighting and various camera mounts, uh, camera mount points uh, to make filming easier as well. So yeah, pretty, pretty decent model actually. Good old days of practical models. So, uh, you know, I'm not one for, you know, admiring makeup um, on a day to day. Uh, unfortunately, I'm more of a ship guy, but, you know, credit where credit's due. When you see something like this, um, though kind of grotesque, um, it's, it is, again, tip of the hat to the skill and imagination. You know, grafting on different skins and uh, alien appearances to kind of have this kind of monster effect. Oh, you know, I wonder what the concept art looked like. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And we have a lot of the different, as I said, mixtures of skins and stuff like that. Um, here we have the episode Life Signs. And the Doctor saved the life of a Dean uh, hermatologist named uh, Donora Pal. Yeah, so that was actually a nice one. Touchy-feely one. <laughs> so here we have the Herogen, Jemadar, uh, even the um, Zindi as well. And super, super old Picard. Um, yeah, we've seen Picard go through many makeup um, renditions throughout Star Trek. But uh, listen, that's it. Um, so on wrap-up, we have first appearance, resolutions, uh, also Coda. And coming up next, we have the Janolan in issue 104. So let's put the magazine to one side and let's see about this model, shall we? So here we have the Vidian warship. Let's take her out of her packaging. Uh, let's have a little look-see here. So for those who are interested, uh, 4255A slash B, the Dean Vessel is what it's called here. Aft mounted stand. And uh, it's one of these that I find it a bit difficult to get in. Oh, there she goes. So uh, yeah, there's the stand. Um, not much to be said, so let's pull it to one side. Let's have a look at the ship. Right, so uh, yeah, you know, it's again, it's a very different design. Uh, the center of it uh, seems to be the cast with the wings being the plastic. Um, if you remember the model from the magazine, it was kind of like a dark main coat with kind of light accents. It's, it seems to be the other way around here. You can just kind of make it out in the lighting there. Um, so there's about kind of three, three or four kind of core colors on the model. Um, here you have the profile of it with the kind of support wings and, uh, the engines. I always kind of feel like that's the front of it. Whereas I'm completely wrong. <laughs> We've seen that in the ship profile as well. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a nice looking ship. I must say. Um, I'm just kind of, I'm not 100% convinced with the colours. They're the only kind of things that are kind of lingering with me. Um, we have a couple of different tones here in those kind of greeble sections. Um, again, we have the lighter accents here for the engines. Oh, sorry for banging the camera. Um, but uh, overall, the kind of sculpt looks pretty nice, I must say. Uh, windows on the sides seem to be misaligned. And we have this bit of a graphic here. It's so tiny. Get that in focus and uh, yeah the bridge and there you can see those windows the bridge windows seem to be actually okay and you can kind of see some paneling around there just a little bit different tone just to kind of stand out and then some detailing just along the side of it there as well uh, ventral section looks decent kind of much of the same as the dorsal you have that kind of greebling detail there uh, i remember that part being red in the magazine not that kind of engine yellow but a pretty large ship and i say the wings are the kind of plastic parts there and then the rest is the cast so again it's very kind of balanced enough always reminds me of the insect from um, star trek 2 the wrath of khan that one that crawls in your ear those kind of pincers side of things but that's just the vibe your kind of brain wants to wants you to see what you want to see um but yeah Overall, I think the sculpt is pretty nice on it. Um, I like that tiered bridge effect and then the kind of vents and 
ribbing going down the spine of the ship. Um, I don't know if the back was painted. I could be wrong. It could be like a cowling around that central engine unit, potentially. Not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty decent. Um, can't really complain. It's just, as I say, this colour palette, that's what's kind of just the lingering thought there for me. I'm curious, would G have that thought as well? Um, let me know in the comments below. I could be going down a, a fool's errand with that. But uh, yeah, decent size ship. It kind of it, it seems to be among the larger of the ships again in the collection, uh, wider than it is long. Um, curious to see what it's like on the stand. And uh, anyway, I think we we'll compare it to a ship in the line. But before we do that, uh, let's mount her over here and uh, see what she's like. So um, that doesn't seem right. And that doesn't seem right. It seems to click on better here. But that's that's the wrong way, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, let me just check the magazine. Yeah, it says to actually mount it on those support arms there. So let's just try that. Like, it fits, but there's a huge amount to give. I'm just going to show you. See, it actually says to mount it that way. But that can't be right. That can't be right. Like, when you do it that way, there's so much more give on it. Like, if you put it that way, it's much more solid, but it, it looks wrong. It's hanging over and you're seeing the base, but it's much more solid. And if you put it that way, it looks more balanced, but then the ship is facing down the way. Now, that's not too bad. I could probably live with that. But going with the way that they do it, I honestly just think that's bananas. Like, the give in it, you can easily come out. You have that fear that it's going to fall out. But um, like that's, that to me is much more comfortable. It's just weird. It's just really weird. So, ship comparison time. Um, haven't dusted off Voyager in a long time. But, um, yeah, these two ships, they've dusted off on one or more occasions. So, uh, yeah, you can kind of see the sense of scale. Um, Voyager was early on in the collection, so I'm sure most people will have this. But, uh, yeah, two kind of good complementary ships. I'm still looking at the way that I've mounted my uh, Vidian ship and it's slightly irking me, but um, I'll invest more time into it. But uh, listen, I'm curious to know what you folks think off of the Vidian ship. Is it a good addition to the collection? Um, if you're not a completionist, is this something that you're going to be adding to your a la carte selection? Uh, if not, why not? If you are, well, then why are you? Um, I like to judge you from afar. I'm only messing, I'm not. But anyway... That concludes this review and um, stay tuned for the next one coming up. And as always, thanks for your support, liking, sharing, subscribing. And uh, as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.